Hello and welcome to the part one of this project, Designing a Digital Habitat Guide. My name is Maria Sanchez Amenza and I am glad to present you this project. So, first of all, we have four goals from the curriculum, which are the first one, develop individual and teamwork habits, effort and responsibility in studying as well as attitudes of self-confidence, critical thinking, personal initiative, curiosity, interest, creativity in learning and entrepreneurial spirit. Then they will have to know the fundamental aspects of the natural sciences, the social sciences, geography, history, and culture. Also, they will have to use different artistic representations and expressions and initiate the construction of visual and audiovisual proposals. Finally, they will have to know the value of animals closest to humans and adopt behaviors that promote empathy and their care. Okay, now I'm going to explain the ACAT framework. So, what's ACAT? ACAT stands for Activity Centered Analysis and Design. This is a meta-theoretical framework that suggests the provision of assistance for sophisticated learning environment in both the realm of analysis and design. So, I'm going to explain the self-design, the social design, and the epistemic design for this project, and finally, the tools we require for completing this task. So, first things first, the self-design. We will introduce the concept of habitants and their importance in supporting diverse plant and animal life, engage students with visual aids such as images and videos of various habitats. Also, we will have to guide students through the process of creating a digital habitat guide using free tools that I will explain later. Then, the students apply their knowledge of habitats and digital tools to design their own habitat guide. And finally, these students will present their final digital habitat guides showcasing their understanding of different habitats and their characteristics. So, let's follow with the social design. Here, we will encourage collaboration and discussion by assigning students to small groups or pairs to research and design their habitat guides together. We, as teachers, will foster teamwork and communication skills through group discussions and sharing of ideas during the research and design process. Also, following with the social design, the students will apply their understanding of collaboration by dividing tasks and responsibilities within their groups. And finally, these students will present their habitat guides to the class, providing an opportunity to showcase their collaborative efforts. Okay. Now we go with the epistemic design. Here we will encourage critical thinking and inquiry by posing open-ended questions about habitats and their characteristics. We will guide them in conducting research to gather information and develop a deep understanding of their assigned habitats. Here, students will apply their research skills to curate relevant information and select appropriate visual elements for their habitat guides. And finally, they will present these, these habitat guides and engage in reflective discussion about the research process, sharing insights and new knowledge gain. So, to end with this ACAT part, I will say the tools that they require to follow and complete this task. So, first of all, Microsoft Suite. Now, this is a free online tool that allows students to create interactive and multimedia presentations. Then, the second tool will be Pixabay. That is a free stock photo website for students to find high quality images related to habitats, and they used to be copyright free. Finally, the third tool is Audacity, that is a free audio editing software for students to record and edit audio for their habitat guide. Now, I'm going to explain the sequence of activities to complete this task. There is divided in introduction, designing the habitat guide, and presentation and reflection. So, first of all, I'm going to start with the introduction part. Here, we will introduce the concept of habitats and their significance. We will show them images and videos of different habitats to engage students and stimulate their curiosity. And finally, we will pose open-ended questions to encourage critical thinking and inquiry. In this introduction part, I would also like to include that they will have to gather information about the habitat they were given by the teacher. Now, the second part, designing the habitat guide, where we will introduce Microsoft Way as a tool for creating interactive presentations. The teacher will have to guide the students in designing their habitat guides focusing on set design and selecting appropriate visual and arranging them in an aesthetically pleasing and current manner. Here, the teacher will encourage the students to consider the social design aspect by discussing and sharing ideas within the groups to create a cohesive and engaging habitat guide. Here, we will also introduce the audacity as a tool for recording and editing audio, and instruct the students, the students to record audio narrations that reflect the epistemic design aspect by sharing the research to find it insights and reflections about their assigned habitat. The teacher will have to encourage the students to critically evaluate and revise their audio recordings to ensure clarity and coherence. Finally, in the presentation and reflection part, we will allocate time for students to present their habitat guides to the class. 
the student, the teacher, will have to emphasize the importance of effective communication and demonstrations of knowledge. And it is helpful that we facilitate a, a reflective discussions where the students share their experience, insights, and new knowledge gained through the project, emphasizing the epistemic design aspect. Now I'm going to explain the steps to achieve this project. First, we will assign each group of students a specific habitat to research such as a rainforest, a desert, or an ocean. We will instruct students to gather information about their assigned habitat, including his characteristics, climate, flora, fauna, and unique features. The data will have to encourage the students to use reliable sources like books, websites, and videos to gather accurate information. After that, we will introduce members of trade. As the tool for creating the digital habitat guide, here we will instruct the students to open members of suite and create a new presentation, where we will, we will explain the different features and options available in this tool, such as templates, text formatting, image and video embedding, and interactive elements. Here the teacher will have to encourage the students to select suitable template and customize it to fit their habitat theme. In this part of Microsoft Suite, we will instruct the students to organize their habitat guide by dividing it into sections or pages based on different aspects of the habitat they were given. Here we will guide these students to structure each section with abbreviated headings, subheadings, and content that compass information effectively. So, for the visual element parts, we will introduce Pixabay. So, we will explain the importance of using visuals to enhance the habitat guide. Here, we will instruct students, students to search for copyright free or creative commons license images related to their habitat using platforms like Pixabay. Here, the teacher will have to guide students to insert images strategically throughout their habitat guide to support the content and make it visually appealing. For the audio narration part, we will explain the option of including audio narration in the habitat guide to provide additional information and encourage the audience. Here, we will instruct, instruct these students to use Audacity or other audio recording software to record the narrations about each section of their habitat guide. The teacher will have to guide them to edit and export the audio files in a suitable format for integration into their Microsoft Wave presentation. Finally, we will instruct the students to review their Amidot guide and for accuracy, clarity, and visual coherence, where we will encourage them to make any necessary edits and revisions based on feedback from peers or the teacher. We will guide the students to ensure that the audio narration, visuals, and interactive elements are working properly and enhance the overall user experience. The final artifact or product on this task will be a digital habitat guide created using Microsoft Suite that and it will consist of multiple pages or sections that provide information about the assigned habitat, including its characteristic, climate, flora, fauna, feeds, and conversation efforts. The light will feature visually appealing layouts, embedded images and videos, interactive elements like quizzes or polls, and audio narrations to enhance the user experience. It will serve as an informative and engaging resource that showcases students' understanding of the habitat and their digital design skills. So, the ethical considerations for each tool would be, for Microsoft Sway, the data privacy. We will educate the students to about the importance of protecting their personal information and respecting the privacy of others when using Microsoft Sway. We will encourage them to use appropriate privacy settings and avoid sharing sensitive of personal data. To follow with Pixabay, the attribution and licensing. We will teach students about the importance of providing proper attribution when using images from Pixabay. We will emphasize the need to respect the licensing ter terms specified by the image creators and give credit accordingly. Finally, for audacity, the consent and privacy. We will remind the students to obtain consent from individuals before recording and using their voices in the audio narrations. The teacher will encourage them to respect privacy rights and avoid recording and sharing private conversations without consent. Now, I'm going to present the ethical problems and solutions we would find in doing this task. First of all, the image and copyright. We will teach students about the importance of using copyright-free or creative commons licenses images from sources like Pixabay. We will emphasize the need to provide proper attribution when required. Then, for the audio recording consent, we will ensure that the students have consent to record audio from any external sources or West speakers. The teacher will have to encourage them to obtain permission and properly credit any audio used in their presentations. Finally, in the point of respect for indigenous code knowledge, we will emphasize the importance of respecting indigenous knowledge and cultural practices related to habitats. The teacher will encourage the students to avoid misrepresentation or appropriation of indigenous perspectives and to include diverse voices and perspectives in their presentations. Now, this would be the added values of using digital tools. So, the use of digital tools will enhance the students' learning experience by promoting creativity, critical thinking, and collaboration. 
the use of these digital tools will also provide the students with an opportunity to develop digital literacy skills which are essential in today's world. Now I'm going to explain how we are, am I going to evaluate this task. So the rubric will be used to evaluate the students' work on some criteria. Completing this across information, creativity and design and presentation skills. Each of these criteria will be evaluated on a scale of poor, fair, good or excellent. The completing criteria will evaluate whether the students have included all of the required elements in their project. And if a student includes all required elements, they will receive an excellent score. If they are missing one or two elements, they will receive a good score. If they are missing three or four elements, they will receive a fair score. And if they are missing more than five elements, they will receive a poor score. The accuracy of information criteria will evaluate how accurate the students' information is about the animals they choose. If all of the information is accurate and researched, they will receive an excellent score. If most of the information is accurate and researched, they will receive a good score. If some of the information is inaccurate or not researched, they will receive a fair score. And if a few of the habitats facts are accurate or not researched, they will receive a poor score. In addition to this criteria, the rubric will also evaluate the students' participation and collaboration with the group members as well as the reflection on the relearning and use of digital tools. Now, I would like to explain the PEGI building in this activity. So, how is this activity improving the students' PEGI building? They will be accessing to information. So, here the students are exposed to a variety of digital resources such as websites, videos, and online tools, which expand their access to information beyond traditional classroom materials, and they learn how to search for reliable sources and critically evaluate, evaluate the information they find thus in, in chasing their information literacy skills and also the, their the digital literacy skills. So through the use of digital tools like Microsoft Sway, Pixabay, and Audacity, the students will develop essential digital literacy skills. They will learn how to navigate online platforms, create multimedia presentations, edit audio recordings, and integrate different media elements effectively. These skills are crucial in digital age and empower students to be effective communicators and creators of content. Then the, this will enhance the, this collaboration and communication part, where the project encourages collaboration and communication among the students. They work in small groups of or pairs to research, the design, and present their habitat guides. And this collaborative aspect fosters the development of teamwork, effective communication, and interpersonal skills, all of which are valuable in their personal and academic lives. It also enhances their reflective learning, as the project incorporates opportunities for students to reflect on their learning experiences. Through presentations, discussions, and sharing of insights and new knowledge gained, students engage in metacognitive processes. They reflect on their research methods, design choices, sciences facing, and the learning outcomes achieved. These reflective practices promote self-awareness, critical thinking, and continuous improvement in their learning journey. Finally, the digital leadership part, by using digital tools responsibly, students learn about digital leadership and ethical considerations where they understand the importance of respecting copyright, obtaining appropriate permission for audio recordings, and being sensitive to diverse perspectives. These experiences foster responsible and ethical digital behavior, preparing students to navigate the, only, the online world responsibly. So now we are in the part two of the task. And I chose the question three, where I have to explain and support my justification in that diagram that we're seeing now with five critical elements of this course that I would like to include permanently in my PD. So the five most critical elements of this course that I plan to permanently incorporate into my personal learning environments encompass four obligations and one teaching approach. These are the following. So as you can see, ChatGPT, uh, this application serves as a valuable tool uh, for brainstorming and initiation work. Uh, when it is used appropriately, it proves to be an excellent aid and generating ideas and getting started on tasks. Then Canva has been an invaluable resource that offers a different range of templates and creative elements. Uh, this makes it an excellent choice of for creating visually captivating presentations, posters, or other materials by fostering creativity. Also, Google Drive has been a tool that I've used. Uh, it emerges a remarkable tool for effective group collaboration and efficient information gathering. It facilitates seamless teamwork and ensures everything information sharing among peers. Then, Padlet, uh, that is a highly useful tool for collaborative work, allowing students to create shared boards, upload their work, and share files. It simplifies the process of working together on projects and tasks. As for the teaching approach, I intend to utilize game-based learning. This methodology involves creativity, interactive activities, and games that incorporate the content covered in class. By integrating game elements, it promotes creativity and stimulates students' interest in the subject matter. So now I'm going to follow with the question for uh, on the part two about the decoding, and I will let's start. So, the area one, the professional engagement, refers to the ability of educators to utilize technology not only for teaching purposes but also for effective communication and colleagues family members, and the broader community. 
So what happened again in this course for this part of the competence? So for this course, I have gained insights into various tools and strategies for using community in education. I have learned the importance of staying updated with the latest technological advancements and how to introduce and integrate technology in a safe and efficient manner. This knowledge will help me engage professionally by delivering technology for effective communication and collaboration with and outside the education sphere. Okay. The area of free digital learning uh, encompasses various competencies such as teaching, guidance, collaborative learning, and self-regulated learning. It highlights the ways in which technology can enhance the teaching and learning processes. So, what have I learned in this course that should be useful in this part of the competence? So, throughout this course, I have gained a deeper understanding on how digital technologies can be used to improve teaching and learning. I have learned about different instructional strategies and resources that can be employed to design engaging and instructional digital learning experiences. This knowledge will assist me in incorporating technology to facilitate collaborative learning, provide guidance to students, and foster self-regulated learning skills. Finally, in the area five, empowering learners, learners, uh, it focuses on uh, giving, stu uh, giving students with the necessary digital skills and competencies to free the hidden digital age, and it involves promoting their digital citizenship, critical thinking, problem solving, and creativity. So, what have I have, what have I learned on this course that should be useful uh, for this part of the competence? So I have learned uh, about various tools, methodologies, and abro approaches that empower learners in the digital realm. I have gained insights into fostering digital citizenship, promoting critical thinking through technology-infused activities. Um, also, um, encourage students, students' uh, creativity in their use of digital tools. Uh, this knowledge will help me to create uh, learning environments where students feel empowered to navigate, analyze, and create meaningful content in the digital landscape. So finally, with the question five, uh, I believe I deserve a grade of eight, even though I faced some difficulties with their time tasks, that is coordinating with my partners on specific aspects. But however, I managed to overcome these challenges, so I think an eight would be an appropriate score. Um, in terms of my role in this course, I consider myself primarily as a facilitator. As a person who organizes the group, I believe is the most important part of our collaborative work. Having good organization is crucial for the success of the group, and it has been a strong point in our work. On the other hand, the most challenging role would be the role of star. When you are in the spotlight as a star, all the addition is on you and the responsibility for the group's works uh, rests on your shoulders. Being a star means you have to demonstrate the hard work and dedication put in by the entire group. 